Do you know the two different types of forehand cross netcher? So Dean, what are these two different types of forehand cross net? So the first one we're going to look at, we're going to call an underarm cross court net shot. And this is where it looks like you're playing a straight net shot. And as you're about to make contact with the shuttle, then turn the shuttle cross. The second one we're going to look at is a much more positive position. Now we're going to refer to this as an overarm cross net shot. And this looks like you're playing an aggressive kill with a much more attacking racket and then turn the shuttle cross. So the reason we're making this video is we've had a lot of questions about how to hit a forehand cross net, whether we're using wrist, whether we're using arm. So what we're going to do is give you our opinion on a variety of ways to hit this shot, take you through the pros and cons of each, and then go over some scenarios you might use one or the other. So Dean, since we were younger, we've seen the game develop and evolve as it should. How has this changed the way we hit certain shots? I think if we go back to, to when we were juniors and when we were learning how to play, um, not so long ago for you, but quite a long time for me, we, we were very much taught arm, oh, kind of feel smooth, stay with the shot, stay controlled. And the reason this has changed now, particularly at professional level, is the game has got faster. And because of that, this is where this element of wrist has now come into the shot because we're looking to play much faster across the court to give our opponent less time. So how would you go about hitting this when we were younger? What were we taught? So we were taught to kind of feel, let's just look at the underarm version first. Let's do approach it early and, and kind of feel like as you're hitting the shot to really feel like the racket's coming through the shot, almost to where the shuttle's landing. So you feel like you're, I had a phrase of kind of feel like the shuttle's staying on the strings as, as long as possible. So rather than feeling like a tap, it feels like a, a smooth cross court shot. And I think what we're trying to probably get across in this video is that if that's the technique that you use at the minute and it's working with the level that you are playing in, who's to say that's wrong? that is successful in that scenario. But we're trying to take you through different options to how they both might be useful. And I think you hit the nail on the head there. It's very much about success of the shot. If you're successful doing that, carry on with it. But what we want to do is really show you pros and cons for both. Exactly. So using your arm adds a lot of control and smoothness to the shot. What does the wrist really add to this? Speed. Uh, the wrist is definitely all about speed of shots. So as we mentioned, with the professional level of the game, it's gotten quicker, people are getting faster, so therefore we need to keep the shuttle moving across the net at a high tempo. So with the wrist, what we're looking to do is still approach the shuttle in the same way. We're still going to look like we're playing a forehand straight net shot. But rather than feeling like we're guiding across as much with the arm and the racket, it feels more of a quick tap. Now what that's going to do is pick up the pace which is the positive side, where we have to sometimes be careful when using the wrist is it can lack a little bit more control. Yeah, and we're really talking about pace of the shuttle off the strings here. It's not necessarily a harder shot, physically hitting that shuttle harder, it's just coming off the racket face a lot crisper, so that flight is a lot sharper. So Dean, is there much difference then when we look at sort of the overarm cross net when we're talking about wrist and arm? Not really. The wrist and the arm conversation will still come in exactly the same whether we're kind of overarm or underarm. It's more how you approach the shuttle. So obviously when we talked about underarm, it feels like almost the shuttle's coming down onto our racket. We feel like we're under the shuttle. When we're playing so overarm, we look, we look a lot more aggressive. We look like we can play a kill and we're kind of approaching it much more behind. So singles and doubles, I mean, is, is there one we're going to predominantly go towards? I think if we're playing a game of doubles, the one that we have to be a little bit more careful of is if we're coming under the shuttle. And the reason for this is if we're coming under, now that shuttle has to travel in an upwards direction. Now when we're playing doubles, it means that they can kind of really press forwards because their partner's going to cover the rear court. Whereas in singles, this isn't the case. that They can't just come running in because we have the option of hitting the lift and they're then covering the court a lot more by themselves. And we've also got to remember this, the beauty of this cross net is there's the element of deception. Yeah. And the way we hit, we want to be hitting our doubles net shots with a slightly more flat racket. Yeah. If you're coming in here, you don't look like you're going to play that doubles net. So naturally, it almost removes that deception you're looking for. Exactly. So in the way of doubles, yeah, yes, we talked about playing the net shot a little bit more this way. If we get into this positive situation where we are early in this position, what we would expect is that the opposition is still going to be very much in defense formation because it takes a very brave person to run forwards when we look so attacking. Now what does that do? Yes, we can still hit the kill if we feel like we're in a good position, but what you may have created is a lot of space on this early turn. And that's where you then add the deception, as you talked about, David. So then we can come in here, and as we're about to make contact with the shuttle, just have a nice quick turn and play into space. And is there a scenario in singles where we actually might be able to play a bit more of the positive looking cross net? Definitely. If we're hitting good 
either hard attack or, or steep attack from the rear court and we're quick following it up, we may be able to get onto the opposition's block early. And the same rules apply really. If we're able to get into this position here in a game of singles, again, it takes a very brave person to, to step up the court. They're gonna probably have to look for the fast hard shot. And again, what this does is again, it does create a lot of space for us to play into the front. Whereas if we then came in under, we wouldn't have the same visual threat so that that opponent can then maybe start to take a more neutral base position. So you don't always have to be above the tape to play the overarm cross-court net shot. David, you take your position as if you're kind of coming in early. Now obviously as you can see here, David is still above the tape. But if that shuttle was dropping just slightly below the tape, what David can do is almost feel like he gets a little bit lower with his legs. And still now, even though he's making contact slightly below the tape, this looks like a much more attacking angle and again, still create space rather than David feels like he's coming under there. And again, doesn't necessarily have the same presence in the shot. So Dean, just to round up, what are sort of the takeaways from this when we're looking at using wrist or arm to play this cross net? I think it's, it's bringing it back to what's relevant for your playing level currently. And if you're someone that kind of likes to use your arm on the cross net, whether that be above the tape or below the tape, and you're having success with it, don't feel like you need to change it. But suddenly, let's just say you're playing harder people and the level starts to go up and suddenly those shots start to come back, it may be worth you investing a little bit of skill time trying to practice the wrist because the pace of the shot is much higher. And then when it comes to underarm versus overarm, I think the overall thing here is if you can get into this position, the more positive position, do it as much as possible because you look a lot more threatening and it actually opens up a bigger gap at the front. But particularly for you singles players where you're more likely to be in this position looking like a straight net shot, that's when you can really sort of open up the cross gap to turn the shuttle. So you may have noticed that we haven't given you too much technical information in this video. And the main reason for it is because we wanted to have a bigger discussion over wrist versus arm when playing these shots and the tactical situations when these shots are played. So if you do want to get a bit more technical advice on how to play these cross nets, please check out the video below where we go through singles net. And as always, if you like this video, please hit the subscribe button and head over to our Instagram and give us a follow.